Why do we start our sessions with some prayers? Anyone would like to answer the question? Why do we start with prayers? Some of us sometimes come late. Anyway, class attend kabhi hai, the class, anyway, class start with the 640, 440, 445. Why prayers are important? Thank God for our learning. Okay. Anybody else? Seek the blessings of the Lord. Focus. Agar hum log ek beej leke, we just put it here on the stage and next week we come. Will the seed sprout? No. Because the right environment is not there for the seed to germinate and sprout. Likewise, a mind is cluttered with so many things. So when we chant the prayers, we come, we first seek the blessings of the Lord, blessings of the previous Acharyas, blessing of the spiritual masters, so that we are able to comprehend this message of the Lord, which the Lord himself says it is confidential knowledge. This is Guhiyam. Guhiyam means confidential. Just because we are very smart, we are very educated, we are very learned, we will not be able to necessarily comprehend this message. We require the blessings of the Lord, we require the mercy of the Lord to understand this knowledge. I have talked to many, many people who are otherwise very qualified. My own brother, he is from IIT, I am. I have had discussions with him. But many of the things which is now very apparent to me, he is not able to relate with. It's not that I am very intelligent, it is not that I am more sharp, it's not that I have more analytical power. Just that when we have the mercy of a pure devotee of the Lord, we are able to qualify to understand this message. So these prayers are basically prayers to Krishna, prayers to the previous Acharyas, prayers to Prabhupada, all the disciplic succession. Although many of us may now know the meaning, Maybe some time, time permitting, we'll share the meaning also. So we seek their blessings and then we start the prayers. And when we have these prayers, we have their blessings, we have their mercy. And then when we hear the message of the Lord, that message will strike us. Will bring about the necessary transformation in our hearts. Okay, the topic today is curbing the restless mind. Verses 34 to 36 from the third, sixth chapter of the Gita. Dedicated to His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Shila Prabhupada. <clears throat> Let's chant this verse together, text number 34. Please repeat after me. Chanchalam hi manaha krishna Chanchalam hi mana krishna Pramathi balavat dhidam Pramati Balavadridam Tasyaham Nigraham Manye Tasyaham Nigraham Manye Vayo Eva Sudushkaram Vayo Eva Sudushkaram Chanchalam Himana Krishna Pramati Balavat Ridam Tasyaham Nigraham Manye Vayo Reva Sudushkaram Anyone knows these are words spoken by Arjuna? So Arjuna, when he heard from Krishna, that go to a secluded place, sit in a you know, rigid posture, practice strict celibacy, try to control the mind. Hearing all the instructions from Krishna, Arjuna is telling 
chanchala hi mana krishna oh krishna mind is restless how many of us have experienced this especially while chanting we are trying our best somehow to hear the holy name chant attentively but mind will not budge especially during chanting time we realize how much agitated our minds are for the mind is restless turbulent obstinate man laga rahe hain laga rahe hain soch rahe hain at least one round let me chant attentively ek round bhi nahi hoga theek se and very strong oh krishna and to subdue it i think is more difficult than controlling the wind now this was 5000 years back when facebook twitter whatsapp all that was not there all the distractions were not there what to speak in present times we are living in bombay with all the distractions with all the allurements with all the agitations around us all the more it's difficult for us to control the mind now here i have some statistics this was survey done by india today i was also reading the blue whale challenge article today you know how the teenagers these days get trapped 36% of bangalore techies surveyed are probably psychiatric cases this is this is part four facts based on survey one among 20 employees regularly considers committing suicide 28% were constantly under strain so these statistics are quite alarming a lot of people contemplating committing suicide many of them are in depression so let's analyze what's the root cause suicide is something which a person after having tried alcohol after having tried movies after having tried all kinds of intoxicants nothing is working it's finally enough is enough just a couple of days back we had an is officer in uh, i think bihar he committed suicide on a rail track <clears throat> so what's the root cause so here we have a wonderful example from our scriptures where the senses the five horses the mind which controls the reins the horses the intelligence the driver and the passenger in the chariot the soul so the hierarchy is the passenger gives the order to the driver driver to the horses and the horses run in the direction in which the passenger wants to go in our present time the mind is uncontrolled that's why krishna says mind if it is uncontrolled is a worst enemy if it is controlled is our best friend in fact all of us have some goals one of our goals should be somehow to tame the mind otherwise untamed mind can ruin our life so the soul controls the intelligent intelligence controls the mind this intelligence if it is sharp equipped with spiritual insights sq then not necessarily material intelligence there are lot of people who are otherwise very intelligent but they are hardcore womanizers or whatever you call it licentious uncontrolled senses so here we are talking about that intelligence which gives us ability to discriminate choose between right and wrong here it is referring to spiritual intelligence so with that spiritual intelligence we tame the mind and the mind in turn tames the senses now because the intelligence is weak we don't have that spiritual insight in fact all of us have heard that so a thought reap a word so a word reap an action the building blocks are the thoughts everyone has heard about that 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 chain is there so a thought reap a word so a word reap an action so an action reap a habit so a habit reap a character so a character reap your destiny so they say the building blocks is the thoughts can anyone help me with an answer what is before the thought what is before the thought what brings forth thoughts in our minds what is the cause of the thoughts if it is good thought like for example today you got a thought let me go and attend the class 
therefore you are here a lot of people got a thought in their minds aaj bahut kaam hai thake hue hain thoda sa rest kar lete hain anyway janmashtami hai parso jana hi hai darshan tab ho lenge swami ji ka dekh lenge unka face bhi aaj kyun jaate hain rest kar lete hain so thought came what is the basis of that thought beliefs okay anybody else gunas sanskars so let me repeat the question the thoughts are the building blocks A lot of books have been written on power of positive thinking you change your thoughts you change your life the law of attraction talks about think visualize positive outcomes and it will manifest in your life what is the building block what ignites the thoughts in our minds our environment in the society ichha shakti okay what is the starting point of the thought is concept of life a perspective of life broadly speaking there are two concepts of life one is material concept of life and one is a spiritual concept of life material concept of the life is aham mameti i and mine i am the body goal of life is eat drink be merry and enjoy life to gratify the senses royally becomes the goal of life because it is stemming from the concept that i am the body because if i identify that i am the body and i am a pleasure seeking being anandamay abhyasa then if i have to seek pleasure it is through the senses are you with me so somebody you tell them no no you should control the senses you should control the mind you should not indulge you think why what's wrong because we want pleasure nothing wrong about seeking happiness that's an intrinsic quality of the soul but the concept that i am the body enjoying the senses is what will give me pleasure that drives me in one direction that's why krishna in the very beginning of the bhagavad gita in the second chapter introduces another concept of life and that is you're not the body you're spirit soul this body is temporary it is a dress it is a yantra and you are the dehi the one who is occupier of this body when we so the entire gita is about to bring about a transformation in our understanding of what is life who we are and when that shift happens when that paradigm shifts when we understand that i am a spirit soul then automatically there's a change in our thinking our feeling and willing the kinds of thoughts we will harbor the kind of feelings we would like to uh, to have and the actions will automatically change now here arjuna is saying it's more difficult to control than a raging wind just like when we have hurricanes and tornadoes at best we can just protect the properties make some warnings and try to control the damage but otherwise we have no means to control them so here we have shrimad bhagavatam 7th canto saying one who thinks that he has many enemies is an ignorant man a person in knowledge knows that there are no enemies but those within oneself the uncontrolled mind and the sense and if we tackle these enemies uncontrolled mind and the senses most of the challenges which we encounter in life are automatically resolved arjuna was facing the challenge at the external krishna attacked his internal perspective his spiritual intelligence its uncontrolled mind and senses lot of instructions about mind and senses krishna shares in the gita and so this is person in knowledge we all have many enemies 
clouded by different degrees of ignorance we think that okay he has made my life miserable but actually it's the uncontrolled mind and the senses mind is so strong and obstinate that it often overcomes even one's own intelligence so rather than intelligence directing the mind and the mind directing the senses now it's the other way around it subdues the intelligence that's why i have shared this earlier also many times we make resolves subah mein uthunga main your intelligence says ke acha hai mere liye uthna i should get up i should do my prayers i should go for walk whatever it is but the mind cheats us that's why many resolve resolutions we make when we are in good sense but we get cheated by the mind many times because of this mind we also <clears throat> get entangled one time there was a sadhu he was living in a very simple thatched hut very simple life with practically no possessions and the only possession he had was a coffin cloth coffin cloth is you not know, lime cloth that was the only possession he had nothing else thatched house so he was quite happy and whole day he would be spending time chanting and reading gita this guru had ordered him that you know, focus your mind attention on chanting hearing reading and he was doing that unfortunately one day when he got up in the morning he went to pick up his coat and cloth he realized that the cats have sorry the rat has nibbled on it there were some holes in the coat and cloth he couldn't use that cloth anymore so he felt very sorry and then he went to nearby village to beg for more cloth he got the cloth got the coat and stitch and he continued with his chanting and reading again one day the same thing repeated he got up and he saw the cloth getting nibbled by the rats so some of the villagers suggested to him as a kab kab itni baar jaoge not mangne why don't you keep a cat cat will take care of rat and you continue reading the gita the problem is solved so all of you understand where are we heading so he accepted that suggestion and he got a cat so he was very very happy because the cat was taking care of rat and rat was nowhere in the scene and every day morning he would go the coffin was intact the problem was solved but unfortunately whenever the the cat would get hungry he would say meow it would need some milk so he would again go to the neighboring you know hutmans or villages and you know ask for some milk because he has to feed the cat why the cat has to be fed so that will take care of the rat and rat does not disturb his coffin and so that he can peacefully read the gita so a lot of people started suggesting every day you have to go around and you know beg milk for the cat why don't you keep a cow not only for the cat you can also drink the milk so if you have a cow in the house you can get milk fresh milk daily you feed the cat cat will take care of rat rat will not disturb the coffin and you can peacefully read the gita so you got a cow and you know cow it's not easy to maintain so he and the problem was actually solved every day he would just milk the uh, cat or the, the the cow and he will drink the milk and he will feed the cat and cat will take care of that keep it at bay the coffin was intact <clears throat> and uh, now how to feed the cow so someone suggested there is lot of land lying you know uncultivated why don't you use that grow some grass sometimes you can leave the cow or you can cut the grass feed it to the cow so he started doing that and it became very hectic for him now every day he would go to the ground and you know cut the grass bring the grass to the 
and he has to milk the cow. Gradually his time for reading Gita reduced. Because he got busy. For what? To keep the rat away. And then someone suggested, why are you wasting your prime time, poor time in going to the field? Get a wife. Get married. She will do all the household work. She will go to the field. She will get the grass. She will milk the cow. She will give you a hot glass of milk whenever you want. And she will take care of the cat. Cat will take care of rat. And you can peacefully read the Gita. So he happily got married. And all the married people know what happened after that. <laughs> so then, so when uh, they got married, so the wife started, after some time, after honeymoon period, they said, why not have children? So to cut the story short, they had children and the family grew. Finally, they had two, three children. And the whole house was a commotion, children playing, crying here, there. And he had practically no time or interest for reading Gita. All this was done for peacefully reading Gita. So one fine day, the Guru came to that hut and said, by that time, the whole house had changed. You know, the interiors had changed and all kids were playing all around and all that. So he fell at his feet and said, I am the unfortunate one. So many of us, with this material perspective of life, we were talking about thinking, feeling and willing. Because of this material perspective of life, we go ulaj. How do we go ulaj? To solve one material problem, we find a material solution and that material solution creates another two problems. Like we talked about last time, how are a person entangled in this verse? The chain of action and reaction. Because of desires we act, that action produces a reaction. The reaction can bring forth happiness or distress in life. Now to counter that distress, we create further actions. That actions further has reactions. A chain of action, reaction, and we get entangled in that chain. We get bound. So that's why all along spirituality says simple living, I think. Because of material concept of love, bodily concept of love, we are never satisfied. We want more and more dresses. Jaya Lalita, I was reading an article, she had some 300 pairs of shoes. Number of saris. Because, again, there is a person who is in spiritual concept of life, whatever is required, bare minimum for the body, that's enough. Because of this concept of life, we are never satisfied. Desires. Because of the concept that no, I should, I should not be left behind. Comparison comes. Because of the comparisons, we get geared up. It goes on and on and on. So <clears throat> now easiest way to control the mind, Arjuna was given the <clears throat> Ashtanga yoga process, go to a secluded place, which is not practical. Arjuna, 5,000 years back, says it is not possible. Chanchalahi Manakrishna, and he's a family man, he's a Kshatriya. It's not possible for him to give up his kingdom, his family, and then renounce and go to the forest. So is with us. Especially in this age of Kali, there's an Upanishad which talks about Kali Santana Upanishad, which talks about how in this specific age, Harir Nama, Harir Nama, Harir Nam Evahi Kevalam. If we have to tame this mind, it is not by intelligence. Our intelligence is very weak. The mind is very agitated. It's a very, in one sense, you call it a hopeless case. If you were to go to a spiritual hospital, we will be immediately sent into an ICU with ventilator on. So, so Harir Nama, by chanting the names of this hope for us, the example is Prabhupada when he went, 
so many hopeless people with all kinds of bad habits with all kinds of backgrounds by chanting the name of that slowly they all got purified by raso varjam raso priyasya param drishwa nivartate by experiencing a heart higher taste automatically the lower taste for other things fail off text 35 <clears throat> the blessed lord said o mighty arm son of kunti it is undoubtedly very difficult to curb the restless mind sometimes we get sometimes we get disheartened or discouraged or disappointed ke main chanting kar raha hu man nahi lag raha mind nahi focus ho raha krishna is saying yes it is undoubtedly very difficult krishna is saying undoubtedly it is very difficult to curb the restless mind but it is possible by constant practice and detachment it is possible don't become hopeless it is possible by constant practice that's why the acharyas have given last time when we were discussing this why are we doing it not because mujhe maza aa raha hai aaj mujhe maza nahi aa raha i am not liking it it's not very palatable it's not very tasty but by constant practice acharyas have told do it sadhana bhakti by following their rules even though i don't like doing it that is tapasya what is tapasya tapasya is voluntarily accepting some inconvenience for a higher cause subah uthna hai acha nahi lag raha but do it chanting kar raha hai initially it may not be very tasty the example is given when a person is diseased he is having jaundice when you give him a sugar candy it will taste bitter the sugar candy is not bitter but because your disease you are unable to at- to taste the sweetness great acharyas tukaram purandra das you hear all those you know they have sung so many songs glorifying the holy name talking about the nectar which is there in the holy name how they are relishing each and every word of the uh, mantra they are not cheating us they are not telling lies it's a fact that the holy name is nectarian but unfortunately we are not in a condition that we can relish it therefore it is said constant practice and detachment now right now we are in a disease state when we are diseased what do we do we go to a doctor a doctor who knows about the entire body he understands as compared to us more about the body the disease and all that so he asks us few questions he diagnoses our problem and what does he do then after that apart from giving a bill <laughs> what does he do what does a doctor do prescribes a medicine now when you go to a doctor you spend 15 minutes the doctor asks you many questions he diagnoses you and this thing that 15 minutes is more important or the medicine what he has prescribed taking that medicine is important what is more important what if you go to the doctor had a nice conversation without he tapped you up gave you a good confidence ho jayega theek ho jayega chinta mat karo and finally you come back and whatever prescription is given you don't follow i don't think there will be much use there so real benefit of visiting a doctor comes if you follow the prescription of the doctor that's why constant practice acharyas have given as a prescription ye karo now many times the medicine is bitter we don't like doing it doctor may give a prescription do injection lo i had a deficiency of b12 so the doctor gave me every week you have to go and take an injection it was not very parallel you have to travel go to the hospital then sit in the bed then put the sedine this thing injection it was not very good but you have to follow the prescription <clears throat> so doctor will give a prescription and you have to follow the prescription if you are really serious about getting cured and the doctor will also give you a list of although in allopathy it's not much the list of do's and don'ts with respect to your diet medicine and diet so likewise we have just like for body we have material doctors who understand the body 
exactly like this for our spiritual disease, for the disease of the Atma, for this bodily concept of life, which is forcing us all kinds of material desires, we have spiritual doctors. Just like material doctors have studied five years, eight years, MBBS, house job, internship, and then they have some 15, 20 years of experience. You go and they immediately understand what's the problem and they give you a prescription. Likewise, great Acharyas understand where we are. They understand why we are messing up our lives. They understand the root cause. And they give us a prescription. Just like many of us go to a authorized doctor and practically we blindly follow the prescription. Am I right? If you go to a doctor, he'll give you a tablet name. You can't even decipher the name of the tablet. Sometimes the handwriting is like you have to go to the chemist and say, Diye de do But you have faith that I have gone to a doctor who is an MD, works in Hirindani hospitals, who is authorized, who is a reputed doctor, experienced doctor. I follow the prescription. In one sense, you can call it blind faith. But it works. There's a basis to have that medicine even though you don't understand what's there in that medicine. Likewise, somebody asked me this question, we chant these prayers, what's the meaning of it? Yes, it is important to know the meaning. Just like in a prescription, it is important to know. After all, you're taking paracetamol, what is there in that? It's good to know. But even if you don't know it, still if you take the medicine which is authorized, which is genuine, from a genuine doctor it will act, even if you don't know what the medicine has. So likewise, we chant those prayers which are authorized prayers, which are from the great Acharyas. Even though we do not know the meaning, still we will benefit from it. So they are spiritual doctors. Just like we go to doctor and practically we have faith in their instruction and prescription. They give us the prescription, we take the prescription, buy the medicines and take it then. And quite possible we get cured of the disease. Likewise, it is important that we take the prescription seriously and follow the prescription. That's what Krishna is saying, practice. So what is the prescription our Acharyas have given? They have given nine processes which we can take shelter of, nine prescription, nine kind of medicines. One is Shravanam. Shravanam is hearing about the Lord. What Arjuna did was Shravanam. With this, what happened? All his Shankai, all his doubts, all his wrong perspective, slowly sublimated. Shravanam. Beginning is Shravanam. Many of you have started chanting. What was the first step? What was the first step before you started chanting? Hear it. You came for these classes, you heard, you got inspired and motivated, and then you started Kirtanam, chanting. The starting point is Shravanam. Shravanam, it is done properly, sincerely, with faith, will lead to automatically Kirtanam. Then, Smaranam. Sometimes people say, what is Krishna consciousness? When we have done Shravanam and Kirtanam, then there will be background consciousness, Smaranam. We will be conscious of the Lord even in our daily activities. Even while doing our work, we will be conscious of the Lord. For whose pleasure we are doing that work. Just like I give you an example. It is possible background consciousness, just like when a boy is in girl in love with a girl, he may be doing his different thing, but background he's thinking of his beloved. He's walking in the market, but he's thinking, let me buy this car, let me buy this card. So smaranam. And then we have father sevanam. When we have shavanam, tirtanam, smaranam, automatically there will be there will be some thrust to serve the Lord. Without some seva, you will feel a little uncomfortable. You will desire, give me opportunity to serve, sevanam. 
Then Archanam. Archanam is worshipping the Lord. Then Vandanam, offering prayers to the Lord. Then Dasyam, thinking oneself as the eternal servant of the Lord. Right now we are thinking that I am the master. Even when we go to God, it's more for, oh, give me this, give me that. A time comes with that spiritual consciousness evolution, one thinks that I am a servant of the Lord. And Sakyam, befriending the Lord. And Atmanivedam, surrendering everything unto So these are the medicines. In fact, we have examples of great devotees who by taking only one medicine, can you give me an example of a devotee just by doing Shravanam, he got liberated. Anyone? Parikshit Maharaj. When he got a notice that in seven days he is going to leave his body, he gave up his kingdom, went to the bank of Gil for next seven days without any distraction, without even eating, sleeping, he heard about the Lord and he got liberated. So, even Prabhupada says, even one of the process, if it's done properly, has the potency to liberate us from this material entanglement. So, these are the different medicines. We have example of Parikshit Maharaj, this is Shukadev Goswami. He went to the bank of Ganges, heard the Srimad Bhagavatam and got liberated. So, here this is our comfort zone. Deep in bodily concept of life. By Abhyasa, by practice and detachment, we come to this zone. And this is where the magic happens. But many times we don't want to leave our comfort zone. Comfort zone is getting up at 8 o'clock in the morning. Once in a month attending Gita Life class. So we come out of the comfort zone, we follow the instructions seriously and then we come to this zone where the magic happens, where we are blessed with Divya Gyan. We have a spiritual perspective of life. We are not forcing our desires to curb our desires. Automatically we have the right desires. The root cause of suffering is attachment. This is Buddha said. That's why Krishna is saying detachment. With abhyasa, what will happen? With practice, what will happen? Automatically, the detachment will come. So, this is all of you have probably seen this. Oh, Master, is it proper for a monk to use email? What is the reply? Sure, as long as there are no attachments. So these days monk's life is also quite difficult because we have to dabble with all technology for the sake of preaching and sometimes dangers are there. Let's be very upfront. <clears throat> Vairagya means detachment from matter and engagement of the mind in spirit. Now when we are attached to the Supreme Lord, the detachment doesn't come by suppressing our desires. Krishna says, Vishaya vini vartante nirahara sadhinam. If we try to force ourselves detachment, then it will not last for long. That's why many times people try dieting, they try different kinds of fasting. They do that for some time, the weight loses, but later on again, we're back to square one. So, when one Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Samaranam, Pada Sevanam, when we develop attachment to the Lord by taking the right medicine, what happens? Automatically detachment sets in. Jnana and Vairakya. Some of you would have noticed a change in your life. Some things which you were doing earlier, maybe you are very fond of going to movies every week, maybe now you are going once in a month. You will experience some transformation, which is good, don't be scared. 
hearing of the transcendental activities of Lord Krishna is therefore expert treatment for the mad mind. Shravanam, that is the beginning step. So again, I request all of you, these classes, it's a great opportunity for you. With whatever little experience I have over the years, I have practiced this, with my, this thing, sharing insights. It's like, you know, taking some insights and then applying it in our lives. Hearing of the transcendent activities of Lord Krishna is therefore expert treatment for the mad mind and eating of the foodstuffs offered to Krishna is an appropriate diet for the suffering patient. So these two things, Shravanam, hearing, could be different forms. And one of the things which you can do is, all of us eat, we cannot stop eating, nobody is asking us to stop eating. We can offer the food to the Lord. And if we eat prasadam, that also brings about a transformation in our consciousness. Text 36. <clears throat> For one whose mind is unbridled, self-realization is a difficult world. But for he, but he whose mind is controlled and who strives by right means is assured of success. That is my opinion. So God is sharing his opinion. For if the mind is unbridled, unchecked, untamed, self-realization is a difficult work. And we all know goal of human form of life is self-realization. But he whose mind is controlled and who strives by right means is assured of success. Now, sometimes more than speed is the direction which is important. Some of us may not be able to catch the fastest train possible. What if we go to a station and then we see Rajdhani Express, you know, it's about to leave the platform and in a hurry we get into the train. And we have the satisfaction that it's Rajdhani Express, soon it will be speeding at 120 kilometers per hour. And you just get into the train and finally you have to go to Delhi and after some time, after having boarded the train, train, you know, going at 150 kilometers per hour is going towards Chennai. So it is important. That's why it says, one who strives by right means is assured of success. May not be in this life. May not be in next life. Atma is eternal. So we have to strive by right means and be patient. Krishna says, control the mind is not an easy thing. When we start taking the medicine, suddenly don't we, we should not expect that I will get cured. Sometimes there are medicines designed to give symptomatic relief may not necessarily cure the disease. So what the Lord is giving us, we are in a disease state, mind is uncontrolled, the senses are untamed, unchecked. By following this process, the right means we are assured of success. That's my opinion. The false selves lives a false life, the true selves lives a true life. The difference is monumental. So right now we have a wrong concept of life, we are in bodily concept of life. And they are leading a false life. They are going in a wrong direction. From the spiritual perspective, they are getting more and more entangled. In the name of getting happiness, many times we are, we don't know that we are treading a wrong path to achieve that happiness. With whatever little knowledge we have, little experience we have, sometimes when we see some youngsters, you know, dabbling in things, we can clearly see that very soon they are going to mess up their lives. As parents, sometimes we can see children doing things which you know that it's not good for them. But at their level of maturity, they are not able to understand. Likewise, Acharyas, from their perspective, they are seeing that, you know, unless we have this knowledge, we are not doing the right thing. The difference is monumental. <clears throat> Self-realization is in fact the only religion, for it is the true purpose of religion, no matter how people define their beliefs. Now self-realization, God-realization, it's not the objective of Hinduism or Christianity, it transcends all this. 
all these are beliefs and faiths ultimately leading to the same end objective of self realization or god realization so prabhupada that's why very forcefully said if you are a christian be a true christian follow the 10 commandments the goal of religion is to understand god and love him develop our attachment to him i have not come here to convert anyone from christianity to hinduism because he is seeing people as soul as not some hindus or christians or muslims that's the designation of the body the whole world is in a chaos because people are in even so called spiritualists even so called religious people are in bodily concept of life hindus muslims christians soul is not hindu soul is not christian and goal of life is to understand who i am self realization a god realization in fact is the only religion for it is a true purpose of religion no matter how people define their beliefs so by practicing christianity properly it is possible for a person to achieve self realization by practicing islam properly it is possible for a person to achieve self realization the different means the same end objective and that is self realization now if we have untamed mind if we don't check our mind if we don't take the medicine if we don't follow the prescription given by the doctor just like we have a disease it's like trying to ignite a fire by simultaneously pouring water into it you will not get fire you get only some some smoke so likewise krishna is giving us the prescription how we can tame our minds and if you follow the prescription by practice abhyasa yogena we will achieve the objective once there was a person <clears throat> he was having a dog pet dog and he was walking in the street and he handed over his umbrella to the dog and the dog with his umbrella in his hand walking in the front it was a nice scene people were also watching seeing that what a wonderful dog he has such an obedient dog he is walking in front with umbrella <clears throat> and the master also had that satisfaction see dog is listening to me i told him to carry the umbrella he is walking so very soon it started raining it started pouring and then this man is getting drenched so he started rushing towards the dog for for taking the umbrella and the dog realized you know, why the master is rushing maybe some mistake i have done it also started running with the umbrella in his hand and the master is running somehow to get back that umbrella and the dog is also running fine finally the dog reached the home and the master also behind him reached the home fully drenched and wet now i want to to ask all of you what does the dog represent in our life what does the umbrella represent and what does that master which is running behind the dog having the satisfaction that the dog is carrying my umbrella what does that represent what does the dog represent what does the umbrella represent ashish what does the dog represent mind what is the umbrella so the dog represents our mind the umbrella represents our consciousness when we give initially the mind is trained we give our consciousness to the mind mind is our friend so we have the satisfaction that we are safe and when it starts pouring what does the pouring the rain represents all the miseries when we got into get into some material miseries some allurement some temptations we run towards the mind to help us to give us solutions but the mind is also running away it will not give us the solution it will not give us the umbrella back and we get fully drenched fully wet so <clears throat> how the our consciousness is trapped by the mind it's a very interesting thing mind i was reading in a book mind is always thinking of the past and projecting of the future 
इट हैज अ होप दैट फ्यूचर विल बी ब्राइट अगर ये हो जाए ये हो जाए ये हो जाए तो मैं खुश हूंगा द प्रोजेक्टेड फ्यूचर गिवस इट्स हैपीनेस एंड वॉट इज द लिंक बिटवीन अस द आत्मा एंड द माइंड इज द ईगो That's why, even during chanting time, you're always thinking. The mind is full of thoughts. Thoughts of what? Past and of future. Future me, agar ye ho gaya, ye ho gaya, ye ho gaya, then I'm happy. Ho gaya. Past ka, what has happened to you is constantly there in the mind. That's why the book Eckhart Tolle talks about power of now. He says the state of no mind. No mind means you can kill the mind. Mind which has sapped your consciousness, has pulled your consciousness. The consciousness which is your property has been stolen away by the mind and got trapped. So he he talks about how it is spiritually we are unconscious because our consciousness is trapped by the mind. Spiritually we are unconscious. just like the dog taking the umbrella the mind has trapped our consciousness mind which is constantly thinking of the past and the future so by this purification we take back our property figuratively we take back the umbrella and when it rains we have the umbrella to protect us if when it when temptation strike us when we have the spiritual consciousness we can protect ourselves growing to serve serving to grow so purpose of life should be we grow for what to serve god to serve others to serve mankind many of us are now having the motto the goal to serve our senses that's why Beats selfishness, beats hatred, beats ill feelings. We will serve the Lord. If every house becomes a temple of the Lord, the Lord is the center. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam—all these activities are going on. Then it becomes a happy home. If the mind is not controlled, we are constantly battling with various kinds of agitation. It's difficult to free fools from the chains they wear. in the comfort zone we are already entangled it's difficult to free the fools from the chains which they wear so we have to take heed to the instructions given by the lord bring about some changes in our lives by following those instructions and thereby work towards self awareness we we'll stop here anyone has any question anything you like to ask <laughs> anything you like to ask and then we move on there's something called as psychological time and there's something called as clock time clock time you can be in the present and if required think of the past and think of the future but where are you right now in the present psychological time is you're obsessively thinking of past and future and you've lost control over yourself so there's a difference between clock time and psychological time when we are talking about past and future obsessive attachment to past and future is called psychological time that is wrong when day after tomorrow is janmashtami i have to plan for janmashtami i cannot say i live in the present next day janmashtami aayega i live in present but being in the present to think of the future not obsessively get trapped by the future that's the difference any other question
So does that mean you are saying that if I execute my responsibility properly, is that dharma? Is that your question? Suppose your dharma is you are a businessman and you do your business ethically, honestly, don't cheat others. And is that enough? That's what your question. The answer is no. The answer is Krishna also in the Gita talks about mam anusmarya yuddhicha. You do yuddha, you do your duty. But simultaneously, you have to do a much higher duty. And that duty is what? Remember me. Now we go to the other extreme. We go to the extreme that, you know, Mera so Bhagwan ko sab ye surrender karo, Bhagwan ka smaran karo, this is when who will do my duty? You have to do your duty. But while you do your duty, remember the Lord. Try to cultivate self-realization. This is not a binary logic, zero or one. Shravanam means, doesn't mean whole day Shravanam. Morning, one hour, two hours, allocate for Shravanam. Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam, Father Sevanam, Archanam. And then do your duty. If you have done that, quite possible while doing your duty will remember the Lord. And nobody is saying, don't do your duty. Do your duty honestly, ethically, work hard, work sincerely. But if you have done this primary duty, even the duty what you do will not be for selfish, you know, greed, lust, pride to fulfill our you know, ego. Body car leni hai, mujhe ye lena hai, mujhe ye dress penna hai. That will, it will, it will be, you will transcend that. Have you seen that video of Sridharan, that uh, metro man? He gets up in the morning, he is excelling in his work. He's beaten all records. But he says, you know, I get up, I do, I do my Bhagavatam 45 minutes, I do my Japa, I do my chant, whatever. And then work boldly. Then you're not afraid also. Otherwise, you are very petty minded because selfish. Mera career career. Otherwise, you're bold. You, know, you have the Lord with you. You don't mind taking steps otherwise, which one is fearful of. Because it's stemming from another paradigm. And the paradigm is what the Lord is with you. I am serving the Lord. Again, that does not mean you become reckless. 